brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning and welcome to our worship service. I am Pastor Penny Corey and this is Kilmornick United Methodist Church. We are in the midst of the Lenten season. We have come together today in the presence of the Almighty God to praise him with the singing of hymns and spiritual songs and to hear his holy word and to fellowship together. May grace and peace be multiplied to you as we worship together and may Jesus fill us with his warmth and his new life. I'd like to uh, continue to give an uh, invitation to any of you to come to our Monday night Linton Bible study at 5.30. We meet in the uh, Seeker Sunday School classroom. We are studying a book called A Linton Journey of Finding Jesus in the Psalms. It has been a great study last week and uh, all you have to do is come and bring your Bibles and join in on the conversation and discussion. Um, we also welcome you to our Wednesday noon worship and luncheon that is held for the community at the Kilmorning Baptist Church. This week, our Kilmarnock United Methodist Church will be providing the music at that Lenten worship. Wayne and Judy will do a piano organ duet, and Sherry Bennett will share special music. And KUMC is also helping with the luncheon as well afterwards. So come and support uh, our church and worship the Lord during this Lenten season. The Stewardship Committee is providing a special event for us next Sunday at 1230. Um, we will be having a special guest, Ryan Wood, um, that is a representative of Curry Funeral Home. And he will be giving helpful suggestions and practical steps for planning our own fu fu funeral. Couldn't get that out. <laughs> What a gift of peace that will be for your family and your loved ones. We'll meet in the fellowship hall downstairs for this event. During the season of Lent, the Women's Circle is sponsoring a collection of paper products um, that will be given to support the uh, Haven in Warsaw. This is a women's domestic shelter. Uh, there's a collection box outside of Joanne's office, and also you may leave them in the uh, narthex as well. I'd like to continue to ask you if you will please stop by our name table on the way in as you enter. We are having more and more people to come and visit us, and uh, we want to let them know our name, and we want to, if we see a visitor, be sure to walk up to them, introduce yourself, and welcome them to our congregation. If you do not have a name tag on the board outside, let me know and we'll make you one. The chancel flowers today are given for the glory of God by Jim and Sherry Bennett to honor the memory of their beloved son, Jeremy Bennett, and to hug the hearts of those who grieve the loss of their loved ones. You will find in your bulletin an insert about the Easter lilies. They cost $17 this year. The deadline for the order is Monday, March the 20th. Please register your attendance in the pads that are in the pews. Pass them down and then back up, back to the center. Let us stand for our call to worship. In the midst of our joy, in the midst of our sorrow, in the midst of our mediocrity, in every moment, let us lift up our voices in praise as we come to worship. Oh God, we come with thanksgiving to this place of prayer. We offer gratitude for the blessings of this day, and especially for the meal which you have prepared for us. As we feast together, loving God, let us bring to your table the troubles which weigh us down and prevent us from being wholly present to the wonders 
bring to this table the problems which perplex us and prevent us from being open to the fullness of life. Let us bring to your table our fears which prevent us from seeing clearly and living boldly. Grant us the courage to leave our burdens at your table and walk from the heavy things table into life so that we might be transformed as we take our holy meal and the feast of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to turn to hymn number 620, Bread of the World. if her current chemo is controlling her cancer. Margaret also asked prayers for her daughter-in-law's first cousin, Nathan Toms, who is 35 years old and has been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. Um, prayers of sympathy for Reverend, Rev, Reverend Evelyn Penn, pastor of Bethel Emanuel, United Methodist Church charge in the unexpected death of her nephew, Donnie Weeding. And uh, continued prayers for Ed and Marlene Gates for strength. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, magnificent Father, by your Holy Spirit, your whole church is governed and sanctified. Direct us with your most gracious favor that all of our works, begun, continued, and ended in you may glorify your holy name. May many come to the Lord through salvation and join the fellowship of believers here at Kilmarnock United Methodist Church. Bless, cover, guard, and protect our church with your powers so that no harm or disaster will come near our church. Command your holy angels to stay in guard, to keep evil far from us, and to keep the name of Jesus lifted up in every meeting and every worship setting. In this Lenten season, Lord, have mercy on us. Do not forsake your faithful ones. Be a refuge in times of trouble. Affirm your holy ordinances made to our ancestors that we may be faithful to follow in their footsteps. May we choose to forgive all who have injured or harmed us. And, O oh Lord, forgive us for any that we may have injured or harmed. Lord, we pray for all who have added many challenges in life. 
We pray for hope and healing for those who are feeling alone and abandoned and whose strength is spent. God, please send someone to them to help build their faith. Fill our fear and our emptiness with glimpses of the presence of Jesus. Oh God, your presence reaches every corner of the globe. You know every cry of despair. Send courage and light of Christ to them. Send your peace from heaven. Help them and guide them in the next right step. Help us to abide in your timeline and by your method of healing. <clears throat> we believe that you send miracles at just the right time. Let your peace fill us with love and goodness. Oh God, hear the spoken and the unspoken request of our hearts today. May your will be done in us, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Lord God, our healer, send your anointed healing power to those who are sick, to those in the hospital, to those who are recovering at home and in rehab facilities, to those who are in nursing care facilities. We especially lift up your throne of grace and mercy, those mentioned in our prayer request today. O oh, great King of love, let the leaves of the tree of life bring healing to your people and send love and comfort to those who grieve the loss of their loved ones. Dear God, hear the prayers of our heart for our country of America and for peace in the world. <clears throat> Give to our governmental leaders the wisdom to cooperate with each other for the best of humankind. Mend every flaw. Lead us in liberty and justice for all. Thank you for those who dedicate their lives to the military service. Bless them and keep them strong as they fight for freedom at home and around the world. Oh, God, bless your church here at KUMC. Thank you for our spiritual heritage. Thank you for our baptism. Thank you for our daily transformation as we become more and more like Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Keep us growing. Keep us serving. Keep us following the steps of Jesus wherever we go. New every morning is your love, great God of light. <clears throat> Stir up in us the desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to 881. Let us stand and affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed, and then let us sing their Gloria Patre on page 70. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
seated. The scriptures say, bring an offering to God in his sanctuary and praise God's holy name. Let us give our generous gifts, tithes, and offerings to God. Let the ushers come. Yes, for the kingdom's use in and through our church and world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Speak, O Lord. Take the truth of your word, plant it deep in us. Shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ and the glory of God might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Amen. The reading today is from John 6, 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of my sermon today is Leaving the Kitchen. Let us pray. O radiant God, Bless my sermon that it may be a laser beam filled with the Holy Spirit from the very throne of God to penetrate the hearts of your people. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let these people present here and those who hear this sermon by live stream or YouTube be filled with your glory. We pray in the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. People today are spending less and less time in the kitchen preparing a meal and cleaning up from that meal. Journalist Megan Arkell reports that the average woman in the 1920s spent about 30 hours a week in the kitchen. By the 1950s, she was doing this in just about 20 hours a week. The article says, now, women are spending about an average of five hours a week in the kitchen. And most of the time, this is not because the men are stepping up to help. She says, oddly enough, it's because all of the kinds of gourmet kitchens we have and the kitchen equipment that are on the rise, at the same time, <clears throat> even with the expensive kitchen equipment, more than a quarter of all of the meals and the snacks are being consumed outside the home. No more of those 30-hour weeks that Grandma spent toiling over this hot stove. Cooking has become a leisure activity for many Americans instead of a daily job. In the Gospel of John, Jesus uses a number of kitchen-based images to describe himself and his mission for God. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Now, Jesus changes his language in a bit and he says, whoever eats this bread will live forever, eternally. And the bread that I give is for salvation of the world when you eat my own flesh and blood. <clears throat> you see, Jesus knew that he was going to be lifted up on the cross of Calvary. He knew that he would be sacrificed in his own flesh to bring everlasting life to all who believe. <clears throat> Jesus knew then he would be giving up his flesh to bring forgiveness and salvation to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life, John 3.16. John had already told the disciples that Jesus is the Word of God in human form. And now he says, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, 14. Jesus says to his disciples, eat my body, drink my blood. In a flash, the pleasant imagery of enjoying fresh baked bread in the kitchen turns towards eating human flesh. <clears throat> Jesus, the living bread. Jesus, the word made flesh. Jesus, lifted upon the bloody cross. Jesus, given life for the world. To eat the living bread means that we believe in the life and ministry of Jesus. It means that we will listen to Jesus. We will see him in the daily occurrences in our lives. We will believe in Jesus and we will trust in him even when things go wrong. In Jesus' kitchen, we find God's recipe for everlasting life. Jesus himself is the giver of life. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we get a wonderful privilege, my friends. We get to receive his power, his life, his salvation, and his forgiveness every time we come to this table of grace. And guess what? It's free. Jesus has already paid the price for our sins. All we have to do is receive the gift from Jesus. Jesus promises us, if we will confess our sins and our wrongdoings, if we will say, I am sorry for my sins and repent of them, he will forgive us, not one time, not two times. Every time we confess, he will forgive us. Every time, all the time, anywhere and everywhere. That, my friends, is the power of the bread of Jesus. That, my friends, is the power of the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> Salvation comes to us by the sacrificial death of the Lamb of God so that he can bring life to us. The crowds, and probably not even the disciples, did not really understand what Jesus was saying. By Jesus' death on the cross, he would bring life. The power of the bread and the power of the blood of Jesus cleanses us and frees us and gives us life today. It's really amazing. It frees us from our sins and our guilt. It frees us from shame and pride. It frees us from conceit and criticism, and condemnation. It frees us from gossip and judging others. It frees us from doubt and discouragement. It frees us from fear and hypocrisy. It frees us from the lust of the flesh. It frees us from revenge and control and many other things. Jesus says, eat this body, drink this blood, and be free of all of the things that have hurt you in your past. Oh, what a meal we are invited to. And Jesus says to us, go and sin no more. Lay your burdens down at the cross today. Be clean and be free. The kitchen is a place that sharpens us. It's a place that wakes us up. Our sense of smell becomes keener in the kitchen. 
We taste with a great awareness. We see more clearly. Looking, cooking in the kitchen requires us to be fully present in the moment. This is one of Jesus' greatest teaching that we be fully present in the moment. Otherwise, we will be distracted in the kitchen. The sauce will burn. The dishes will slip, slip from our hands. And so I ask you today, at this very moment, are you fully present with Jesus? Can you hear him calling you to the table? What sin is stirring in your heart that you need to confess at the altar? What will you leave at the horrible, bloody cross of Jesus? I believe that Jesus wants you clean and free today. I believe that Jesus wants you to release and to surrender your burdens to him today. Jesus is continually calling our attention to what is going on. Jesus offers us God's recipe for everlasting life. Faith in Christ's death on the cross brings eternal life to you and to me. And then later it brings bodily resurrection. I want you to say it with me. I know you know it. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe this? Say with me, yes, I believe. <clears throat> Very truly, I tell you, says Jesus, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. John 6, 53. Jesus is giving his whole life to us. Jesus is inviting us to eat with him. Eat my body, drink my blood. The people must have thought he was crazy. This guy is nuts. They chose to leave the kitchen. Clearly, cooking with Jesus is not easy. Jesus reminds them, but it does lead to everlasting and eternal life. Consuming Jesus is not a leisure pursuit. Taking Jesus into ourselves is a full-time challenge, one that will transform us from the inside out. After all, haven't you heard the expression, you are what you eat? Jesus said to those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Jesus says, just as the Father sent me, so I live and breathe because of my Father so whoever eats me will live because of me. The one who eats this bread and drinks this blood will live forever. <clears throat> Don't expect to understand it all. The people of Jesus' day didn't understand it. The disciples didn't understand it. We are asked to just believe it and be grateful. In the kitchen of Jesus, the ingredients of bread and flesh and blood all mixed together in a meal that nourishes us spiritually and fills us with everlasting love and peace. 
just as good food and drink in the kitchen of life sustains our physical bodies, so Jesus, the real spiritual food of life, sustains you and me who are his followers. The challenge for us is to stay close to Jesus, to receive his nourishment, and to do his work in the world. Jesus wants us to remain in the kitchen with him even when it gets hot, even when the way gets a little blurry for us because we know that Jesus will lead us all the way to eternal life. So this morning, and especially in this Lenten season, I ask you, how do you sustain your spiritual life? I want to commend you because you're doing one thing right now. You have made time in your day and time in your week to put God first by coming to church to worship and adore Jesus. Prayer is another way to build your spiritual life. We set aside a time to talk to God, to spend time with God, to talk to God and Jesus in the morning will help you get through the rest of your day. The spiritual discipline of fasting also helps us to draw closer to Jesus. Fasting is choosing to reduce or to eliminate your intake of food for a specific time and purpose. You can also choose to fast from watching TV for a specific time in order to spend more time reading God's word and talking with Jesus. Do you know that we offer a daily Bible reading? It's in the back of our church. You can pick one up today. It's so that we can all read the word of God and be nourished by God's word. We also have the upper room devotionals that are free to you. All you have to do is pick one up and use it every day. In this Lenten season, there are many ways to deepen your spiritual growth. So this morning, I invite you to come to the Holy Communion. Be changed by this holy meal. Remember Jesus and do this in remembrance of Jesus. Receiving communion is an important way of living in Christ and allowing him to live in us. So now, here's the challenge for today. At the end of this holy meal... I also invite you to go out to be the body of Christ to the world around us. It's a hurting world, and we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. None of this requires a gourmet kitchen. None of this requires expensive kitchen equipment or gadgets. All we need to do is keep cooking with Jesus every day and live with him every day. For every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Let us pray. Oh, dear God, we feel blessed to be in the kitchen with Jesus today. We will eat his body and drink his blood. We will confess our sins and be transformed into the image of Jesus. We will go out into the world to love Jesus and to share his awesome salvation and forgiveness with them. We pray in the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to hymn number 640 as we sing, Take Our Bread.
today, Jesus is the host of this table. Jesus is calling you by name, come. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. To this table we come because we know Jesus is here. We know that Jesus loves us. We know that Jesus forgives us. And we know that we are blessed to be here today. Jesus Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. There is a prayer of confession and pardon on page number 639 in your hymnal. Let us pray this together. O oh God, just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the bread and drink the wine in the suffering of the long remembrance and in the joy of hope, grant that we may hear your words spoken in each thing of everyday affairs, coffee on our table in the morning, the simple gesture of opening the door to go out free, the shouts of children in the sparks, the familiar songs sung by unfamiliar face, a friendly tree that has not yet been cut down. May simple things speak to us of your mercy and tell us that life can be good. And may these sacramental gifts make us remember those who do not receive them, who have their lives cut every day in the bread absent from their table, in the door of the hospital, the prison, the welfare home that does not open, in sad children, in the feet of the children, eyes without hope, in war hymns that glorify death, in deserts where once there was life, Christ was also sacrificed that we may that we to participate in the saving sacrifice of Christ when we participate in the suffering of his little ones. Amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners and proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I want you to uh, share with me the great thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our best praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from the slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, 
Take, eat. <clears throat> this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> and when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, today we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who are gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, blood of Christ given for you, come to be his table and be nourished. of Jesus, receive his body and his blood, and know how much he loves you. Take and eat, take and drink, and remember Jesus. Receive the body and blood of Jesus given for you. and go in peace. Serve God and your neighbor. Amen. you're loved. Take and eat, take and drink, and remember that this is for you, that Jesus has already paid the price. rise in peace and go and serve God and neighbor. Amen. given to you because he loves you so very much. 
Jesus said, take and eat, take and drink. He said, eat my body and drink my blood that you might remember the sacrifice of what he gave for you and for me. Receive the gift of God. He said, take my body and my blood and remember the sacrifice. rise and go in peace and serve God and your neighbor. Amen. God's beloved. God loved you so much that he gave his son Jesus Christ for you. Jesus died on that cross so that you might know how much he loves you. This is a gift of Jesus. He gave his very life just for you. Take and eat, take and drink. And remember the sacrifice of Jesus as he died upon that cross so that you might have life. and go in peace and go out to serve God and your neighbor. Receive the gift of God, his body and his blood given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Take and eat, take and drink. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you pray the prayer after communion. <clears throat> Loving God, reveal to us your holy presence in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. Restore to us the fullness of life in your name and pour out your abundant grace upon us. Amen. Now, would you stand to receive the benediction? <clears throat> Jesus' love has embraced us with this holy meal and has renewed us in body, mind, soul, and spirit. We have been in the kitchen with Jesus, and he has made us whole. He has set us free from our sins with his awesome body and blood. And now with minds alert, upheld by his grace, 
we follow the steps of Christ. We go out to spread this holy feast with family and friends, neighbors, co-workers, and even our enemies. For we have been transformed into the image of Jesus in this holy meal, in this holy hour. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen.